My memories of the 2008 Star Wars The Clone Wars Cartoon Network show are mostly positive, and I will always remember it for what it added to the universe. Ahsoka Tano, frequently featured clones like Captain Rex, and Cad Bane are some of my favorite characters from Star Wars ever. Although the show sometimes had that problem that most Star Wars media has, that characters of great significance are brought back and seem to bump into each other in such a way that it makes the universe feel incredibly small, like in one episode Ahsoka runs into THE Chewbacca out of nowhere as opposed to just a random Wookiee, the show nonetheless frequently invented things for the Star Wars universe. Despite the character models always looking a little uncanny, I appreciated its painterly art style. Even many of the locations are diverse and interesting. Like Grievous's lair, which takes clear inspiration from H.R. Geiger, or the cities in Mandalore, where you can find homages to Picasso like Mandalorian Guernica. I fondly remember tuning in to the next episode of the Clone Wars show nearly every week for a couple of years, and I really enjoyed it for what it was during that time. Its writing, however, could get extremely lazy, and events in the stories told are often fueled by characters and entire armies being randomly incompetent. Some of the worst writing is in the first few seasons. For example, in season one, the Separatist droid ship the Malevolence is destroyed because Anakin Skywalker single-handedly hotwires it. I'm gonna hotwire the ship. Give Grievous a little surprise. From one control deck in what could not be more than half an hour to crash itself into a moon. Now, I have no idea how computer programming in the Star Wars universe works, but I feel like there would be plenty of well-guarded systems put in place to prevent something like that from ever happening. And for Anakin to bypass these systems should require a depth of knowledge he just should not have. There's a lot of things like that in this show that are kind of undeniably not thought through. I think the writing generally improves later on as the show steers itself away from thinking of itself as a goofy kid show to something that is more in line with the tone of Star Wars movies like the original trilogy and Revenge of the Sith. But the writing never gets to the point where it's as solid as it could be. Of course, as a kid, these kind of contrivances and plot holes didn't bother me. What did bother me was the battle droids. Specifically, the B-1 battle droids. I always felt really, really sorry for these goofy, lanky, strangely polite war machines. Despite being disposable foot soldiers who most of the time are portrayed as nothing more than meat for the meat grinders that are Jedi Knights, they were still a major part of the Separatist army, and are present in most Clone Wars episodes. It may seem weird that I'm investing so much time into a seemingly small part of the Star Wars universe. Some of you may consider what I'm doing to be nitpicking. But my only concern is whether my critiques, small or large, are accurate. Furthermore, battle droids are a huge part of the Separatist army, one of the main bad guy armies in all of Star Wars. They need to have a strong foundation for me to be invested in the conflict. I think I'm justified in paying close attention to how they behave. They were also the number one element of constant frustration I had with the show. It was really one of the first times in my youth I felt a strong emotional contradiction with what a piece of media was trying to present to me. This is supposed to be the bad guy army, why do I feel so bad when the good guys destroy them? For this video, I've gone back and watched every single episode that has so much as a frame with battle droids in them to answer this question, along with the prequels, the 2003 animated show, and the Bad Batch. Not only has my opinion not changed, I believe my frustration as a kid has become even more justified. With more than a decade after I saw the first episode, and with far greater critical thinking skills at my disposal, I plan to conduct a very thorough analysis into why battle droids honestly deserved better. The battle droids in the prequel trilogy and the battle droids in the Clone Wars have subtle but important differences. B1 battle droids in general have never been intimidating visually. They're lanky, have rabbit-like snouts, and carry themselves like they're always nervous. 
but the ones in the prequels at least look more robotic and uncaring. I think this is because their eyes are tiny and their faces are pretty flat. Battle droids in the Clone Wars, however, seem to get the same cartoony treatment as the human characters. The eyes are way bigger in relation to the face, and the snout is noticeably more rounded. In Season 7, they revert back to the flatter faces for some reason, but that's about it. B2 Super Battle Droids, on the other hand, are far more intimidating. They're bulky, top-heavy, and their eyes are tiny and even have a furrowed brow. B1 Battle Droids simply do not look like they are fit for war whatsoever. They look like they could fall over with a light push. The voices of prequel battle droids are also different from those in the Clone Wars show. Prequel droids sound more monotone and robotic. Battle droids only start to sound silly in Revenge of the Sith. Whereas Clone Wars droids sound like high-pitched, overconfident nerds. Small, huh? Don't worry, Supreme Leader. We'll take care of him. They seem to have way too much emotion for what are supposed to be super mass-manufactured cannon fodder. There's going to be a difference in the voices since prequel droids and Clone Wars droids have different voice actors, with Matthew Wood voicing those in the Clone Wars show and also being the voice of General Grievous, but there's clearly an entirely different comedic direction that was taken as well. So visually and audibly, they are not intimidating whatsoever. In fact, in a different story, I could easily see them being part of a goofy crew in some sort of droid maintenance division for the Republic Army, akin to pit droids. They're basically the twinks of the Star Wars universe. Battle droid victories in the Clone Wars are few and far between. In the prequels, they are useless against Jedi and get mowed down without a second thought. In the Clone Wars, Jedi mow them down too, but they're also not that effective against clones either. They lose, lose, lose. By the very first episode, it is shown they are not very effective fighters as one Jedi Master and three clones destroy hundreds of them without losing a single soldier. My problem when I was a kid was that the battles always seemed so one-sided that I didn't feel much sense of accomplishment for the Republic forces when they won. But now that I'm older, I realize it's not so much that battle droids didn't win, it's that they should have won, or at least performed much better, in several of the situations that are presented. In Season 1, Episode 1, there's a scene where three clones and Master Yoda are being chased by six super battle droids down what is essentially a straight hallway. These droids somehow do not hit a single one of them, except for a rocket a little later on that nicks the heel of one clone. Okay, maybe the B2 battle droids were a little slow this early into the Clone Wars. In Season 1, Episode 4, Obi-Wan is surrounded by droids on all sides. Now, I would expect him to do something clever to get out of this, but all he really does is jump kind of high, making all the droids somehow miss, and force push droidicas through them while he should be getting blasted at by the other sides. Either droids are so terrible at aiming they cannot even hit him once, or Obi-Wan is so physically agile they are not capable of hitting him. Both reasons are pretty ridiculous. In Season 1, Episode 14, three Jedi and two clone troopers essentially charge into over 50 battle droids. What should be a wall of laser fire. And they just close the distance and somehow not a single one of them is hit. Okay, maybe they got really lucky this time. Oh wait, that's just the first wave. Then they do it all again with even more droids and super battle droids. Okay, slight tangent. Here's the thing about Jedi deflecting lasers. So it's basically established that Jedi can block and even deflect lasers back at their opponent. This is likely considered a unique ability of Jedi that can be perfected with practicing their senses and reflexes. It can be inferred by most Star Wars media that a Jedi deflecting one opponent that is shooting at them is well within the bounds of their abilities. A Jedi deflecting the blast from multiple enemies, say two or three, is also within the bounds of their abilities. Once you start going past five, six, seven, probably up to ten, then it really starts to become quite difficult, even for an experienced Jedi, especially if they are being encircled. Granted, Star Wars blasts are much slower than bullets, but they're still difficult to dodge. And this is about as far as I'm willing to suspend my disbelief, because once it gets to a certain point, there is such a small amount of time before the next bullet arrives that even for a supernatural being, there should be some sort of delay so that they can physically move their arms around to keep themselves from getting hit. Once you are up to 20 lasers, you better be one of the most powerful Jedi to ever live, and or are using the Force in extremely clever ways to keep yourself from getting hit. 
In the Clone Wars show, Jedi are frequently deflecting what should be up to 20 or 30 lasers from people or droids shooting at them, in some cases, even more. That's when the curtain starts to fall away and the writer's hands are shown. It becomes pretty distracting, and it makes you wonder why the Jedi keep getting themselves into these very precarious situations that don't make sense for their own survival, and how they keep evading what should be certain death. In this episode in Season 3, battle droids alone manage to kill not only a clone commander, but a Jedi. They encircle them and kill them with overwhelming gunfire, like it should usually happen. But when main characters are involved, it doesn't. Now the specific numbers I put out don't matter too much. Like maybe to you, your suspension of disbelief breaks at a slightly higher or lower number, but there has to be a reasonable limit. A Jedi should not be able to deflect 8,000 laser beams, or else why is the Republic even having trouble winning this war, or why do the Separatists bother with making droids in the first place? Whatever the case, what should be a solid wall of laser fire should be death, and for some episodes, it just isn't. That wasn't so tough. Yeah, that's the problem. Later in the episode, what are essentially lemur people tie droids up by the legs and knock them over, which for some reason deactivates them. Then Ahsoka drags her lightsaber in an arc and kills them all. In the Clone Wars show, B2s are often treated like the more legitimate threat. I think this is illustrated best by this scene. The B2s actually try and shoot at this electrical grenade. The B1 picks it up. In the 2003 Clone Wars show, there is plenty of nerfing droids as well. Mace Windu chops super battle droids down while they stand around him like idiots not doing anything. Mace Windu survives all these super battle droids because of, well, bullshit. He punches raw metal, they run up to him instead of firing, he somehow dodges every single laser beam. He uses the force with such ferocity and ease, it kind of makes the force look like this completely ridiculous god power that requires no struggle or physical effort. He really should be dead 10 times over, but he just doesn't die because, well, he's Mace Windu. But even in the 2008 Clone Wars show, droid competence levels do not remain consistent. Even commando droids, which are supposed to be the super advanced version of battle droids, even more powerful than B2s, get nerfed when it comes to main characters. Okay, here's the setup. Something like 12 commando droids surround our heroes with two who have guns pointed really close to their heads. No lightsaber tricks should be able to get them out of this. One false move, and they're shot in the back of the head instantly. Nevertheless, Skywalker's plan to get out of this situation, which is just pulling the tactical droid close to him with the force and slicing him, like that isn't really that clever, somehow works. Look right here, this commando droid has a clear shot and just doesn't shoot. They really shouldn't have survived this situation without a good plan, but they do because commando droid's ability to shoot suddenly goes away. They make commando droids such a legitimate threat early on that later in the show they have to make them do stupid things to get around killing main characters. Usually this means not immediately firing. In Season 4, Episode 14, they hesitate, then chase Ahsoka and her friend and fire at them, missing. Then they are running down a straight hallway and hit the glass windows for some reason. Then one droid stops a few feet in front of Ahsoka and her friend and misses again. They both should have died three times over in this scene. There are several occasions where droids are cut along their midsection and go down permanently. Which since they're robots and their brains are probably not stored in their midsection, that should mean that that droid isn't automatically dead, right? Like, shouldn't the upper half of its body be firing from the floor? Wouldn't that make droids more effective despite being so weak? My suspicions are confirmed with this clip. A headshot is the only decisive way to disable a droid. They don't need arms, legs, or even bodies to pass intel to central command. So, if they can pass along intel without bodies, surely they can shoot without their legs. Oh, see, they do it here. This tank rolls over a bunch of droids, but they should all be coming back up again, right? You've just kind of pushed them over. Okay, here's an interesting scenario. Our heroes are surrounded by high-powered cannons manned by battle droids in a high-security prison when this happens. The prisoners are escaping with reprogrammed battle droids. Let no one on board that shuttle. How do they get out of this one? Do something clever? Find a way to trick the droids again? I don't know, the giant cannons miss, lol. The reason that main characters keep avoiding certain death is because they're main characters. 
But if one were to try and fix this so that things were made more believable, one way to do it would be to make droids very, very dumb. Now, I'm more than willing to buy that battle droids are not smart, that they cannot think independently that well, and they're mostly limited to executing the orders of others. However, droids frequently fluctuate from being kind of short-sighted to inexcusably, frustratingly, impossibly incompetent. In Season 1, Episode 1, the reason this escape pod with Yoda in it manages to evade fire is because they got lucky that this battle droid was terrible at aiming. The reason the battle droid gives for this egregious error? Ah well, it's my programming. Firstly, I don't really know what this means. How does his programming get in the way of aiming? Like I said, I don't know how computer programming works in the Star Wars universe. But what is particularly difficult about teaching a robot to measure the velocity of something and shoot at it? Especially when that is their main job. It's because battle droids are incompetent when the writers want them to be. In this case, they needed Yoda to escape, but they also needed to show resistance from the Separatist blockade. Normally, this would end up with them simply shooting the escape pod, but Yoda obviously can't die, so they make the droids really stupid to the point it can't aim. When the writers want a comedic scene, they do something foolish. When they need to execute an order that makes the plot go in one way, they're competent. They do their job. When they want the plot to go in a different way, they do something impossibly incompetent again. Star Wars The Clone Wars kind of makes you wonder why battle droids exist in the first place. The idea of having rows and rows of foot soldier armies doesn't really make tactical sense when you have in-atmosphere starships and stuff. Battle droids should really mostly occupy the position of on-the-ground operations like occupying cities, manning command stations, and guarding individuals or ships, which this show usually does. But there's plenty of instances where droids simply charge at the enemy in massive numbers instead of just bombing them from far away with tanks in completely open fields. This show really pushes the believability of why any of this is happening strategically. Regardless, like I demonstrated, B-1 battle droids are frequently shown to be incompetent and ineffective, even in positions that make strategic sense. In the prequels, battle droids are shown to be pretty weak, but Jedi and battle droid encounters are a lot more rare. In the Clone Wars, you often have more than one of those encounters each and every episode for the first two seasons. Whenever a battalion of droids shows up, I immediately know, oh, Nothing serious is going to happen. In fact, the show itself highlights this fact. Have you ever killed a Jedi? No, never. Me neither. You said we'd be safe back here. Come on, there's three of us and only one of him. It won't matter. Which in my opinion is pretty damning for any tension they're trying to produce. Especially when I know they will lose no matter what they do. I can't feel any fear that any significant character will be so much as injured by a lucky shot from a battle droid, let alone killed. Battle droids should have had at least a few victories, at least one lucky shot, at least something to show they can be a threat in specific circumstances. And most of all, if they did get beaten a lot, they should have been beaten in ways that make sense. But we almost never get that. Most of the time, they're played for a joke. Battle droids have always had their comedic moments since The Phantom Menace. The primary scene that comes to mind is when they confront Qui-Gon Jinn. Oh. I'm ambassador to the Supreme Chancellor. I'm taking these people to Coruscant. Where are you taking them? To Coruscant. To Coruscant? Uh, that doesn't compute. Uh, wait, uh, you're under arrest. Now, that battle droid acted in an amusing way, but they didn't do anything that didn't make sense. It questioned them, was given confusing information, hesitated, and reverted to its programming and tried to arrest them. All things that a robotic, although not very intelligent, droid would do. For the rest of the film, they follow orders, shoot when they need to shoot, and do basically what would be expected of them, and nothing more. They act like mindless drones that know how to do their job. Droids in the later prequel films are less prominent, but they start to get a little more silly. For example, the entire C-3PO battle droid sequence. They don't immediately shoot Obi-Wan and Anakin in this elevator. They get destroyed by this elevator instead of just moving slightly. Clone Wars battle droids, on the other hand, they're not stupid in ways robots or computers would be stupid. For example, they can't remember large numbers or count. Concentrate fire on sector 11374265. 11374265. 
What was that again? Just fire right there. Surrender, Republic dogs. We've got you outnumbered. Outnumbered? Wait, one, two, three. You know what are pretty good at remembering large numbers and counting? Computers! In the very first episode, this happens. Uh, hold it. Hold it. I said hold it. Wait. That's far enough. I mean it. Stop. I said stop. We're too big to fit in there. I don't think I can emphasize how bad it is that battle droids are unreliable at following simple orders and sometimes need to be told multiple times before they react. I don't know why that is in this case. Maybe they can't hear the commander or are slow to react, but out of all the things that an enormous mechanical army needs to do, following orders is the number one thing. When droids are not doing things that seem to undermine their entire function, they'll often be doing things like chattering during comedic moments or being clumsy and generally silly. Okay, break time is over. Get back to work. Why would droids need breaks? We've seen them run out of power before, that makes sense, but need breaks? Like, someone working retail needs breaks? Here's an enlightening scene. Look, it's RB551. No wonder he got blasted. He's one of those older models programmed by a central computer. Not us. We're independent thinkers. Roger, 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 Roger. So they say Roger, Roger all together as a joke, but like, they are independent thinkers. In this same episode, one of them keeps walking across this bridge before it's deactivated, and dies while the rest of them flee. Which is weird considering they were all pretty close to one another and once again for some reason, they can't seem to obey simple instructions. This one's just another easily preventable death. Now I will fully concede that the things that droids do are funny. It's definitely my kind of humor. The comic relief moments are even entertaining and give the droids more character but they often simply don't act comedic in a way that makes sense for droids. This comedy constantly comes at the expense of their functionality and makes droids look more like a liability than an asset, which makes me question why the Separatists continue to use them. As General Grievous once said, You expect victory over Jedi, but all you give me to fight them is battle droids! Ah! This scene, although a little hard to believe, makes droids look stupid in an appropriate droid way. When this group of rebels approach this Separatist-occupied city, their cover story is their hunters looking to sell at the market. The commander battle droid scans their cargo, which actually also contains a bunch of soldiers in a Trojan horse type maneuver. And since it's all organic matter, he has a hard time scanning the contents for anything suspicious. Finally, when put under a reasonable amount of pressure, decides to let them through. Are waiting inside. Can you hurry it up? Let them through. There's ways this perhaps shouldn't have worked. Like, since they weren't registered, the droid should have conducted a thorough physical search, and if this scene wanted to be really airtight, it would have explained how even if they did attempt to do a physical search, they would have had a second plan. But it's one of the few examples where droid stupidity is reasonable and not picking up an obvious grenade levels of stupid. The question of droid sentience in Star Wars was never a focus of the original or prequel trilogies or most of Star Wars media. Droids in the OT seem to have these kind of pseudo-personalities that approach sentience. Star Wars standalone movies like Solo abruptly challenge this idea and make everything a lot more uncomfortable. You need anything? Equal rights? Videos on YouTube like The Tragedy of Droids in Star Wars by Pop Culture Detective go into far more detail than I would ever wish to explore now. The question, are droids sentient in the same way a living creature is sentient, is a rabbit hole that I have no business or desire in going into beyond, maybe, for 99% of droids in Star Wars. However, when it comes to battle droids, I can definitely say that if they do not actually feel emotions like a living creature, they sure do simulate them. Droids are shown to often chatter on and off the battlefield. Look out for each other. OM5, are you still there? Yes, I think I'm right next to you. Where is Lord Poggle taking us? OM5? OM5! Don't leave me.
at times question orders. But sir, the ships are still attached. It doesn't matter. And feel things physically and emotionally. All this moisture is corroding my servo motors. Go up to level eight. Get your head adjusted. It feels great. That'll feel great. Why can they feel great? Why can it feel its eyes? Not in the face. Not in the face. Why can it feel its face? Why is it capable of cowering in fear? If I were to stretch the limits of their functionality, maybe allowing droids a certain amount of personality could let them make good decisions. What doesn't make sense is to program them to be capable of feeling their own eyes when smoke shouldn't even damage them, cowering in fear, and becoming depressed. Whoever programmed these would have to be either sadistic or truly had a mix-up of priorities because there is no reason to allow them to feel paralyzing pain and paralyzing fear and comment on that pain and fear in a war. Obviously, when the writers wrote these scenes, they probably weren't thinking of the broader implications of what should just be some silly battle droid jokes. But they put these things in the episodes. And jokes or not, they inform us about the nature of droids, and it may result in unintended messages. Another thing to consider is how droids feel about inflicting death and pain on others. Now obviously they are in a war and engage in quite a lot of that, but do they get enjoyment from it? Battle droids are shown to get or express some superficial sense of enjoyment in killing things a rare few times. Die, Jedi gods! For example, this droid seems to hum and dance in enjoyment as it breaks open an escape pod to kill clone troopers. In this scene, this droid sort of implies through his body language and voice that he enjoys torturing this guy. You will remain conscious, Master Jedi. The bounty hunter has some questions for you. Attach mind limiters, pain pulsers, and give him a full dose of XC-33. On the other hand, I don't know if this is the same droid, but he expresses concern for the tortured prisoner of war. I'm not sure how much more of this he can take. And reluctantly does his job, signified by a clearly sad Roger Roger. Are you a medical droid? Uh, no sir. Then step back and shut up. Roger Roger. And on the other other hand, when droids are attacking this innocent village, Ahsoka makes a very interesting statement. Why are they tattered apart our homes? We've done nothing to them! Violence. That's what those droids are programmed for. If that's the case, are battle droids programmed to dance and hum as they do their jobs too? For what benefit? Are they also programmed to show concern for the health of torture victims despite not being a medical droid? This seems to suggest that droids are programmed to follow orders with little to no moral awareness of what they are doing. But this principle is far from clear or consistent in the show, and makes any droid understanding of good and bad pretty confusing. One thing is for sure, all of the comical evil is done by superiors who give the orders. As a kid, I picked up on this line, and later in the show when I saw that droids could be fully reprogrammed for service jobs and even jobs helping the Republic, it really made me feel sorry for them. Although this does not excuse their actions, it does make any hatred of droids themselves and subsequently feelings of righteousness in their endless destruction lessen. How can I hate a machine that has no other choice? Surely my hatred would make more sense if targeted at the people who program and order them. There are points in the show where they backtrack and try to show droids doing intimidating things, but it kind of falls flat. They try and show a droid oppressing people. Keep moving. And it's like, oh okay, the battle droid is trying to be intimidating. Alright, I'll keep moving you little rascal. Like, why should I feel different after the show constantly undermines and makes fun of them? It's a little late to treat them like a legitimate threat. Droids are only a fearsome thing when they are numerous and march in unison. It makes them appear to be an enormous, unthinking army. Individual droids, on the other hand, not very scary. In fact, they're downright adorable sometimes. They lose power in a very cute way. This droid just lightly knocks the door in the middle of an active battle. One of them cares about things like promotions. But I just got promoted! Uh, hold it. Uh. <laughs> Once again, 
adorable. Here's a weird scene. These guys are rebels, and they have infiltrated a Separatist-controlled city. When two battle droids are pestering this guy about his identification papers, this rebel does something kind of reckless. Your identification failed. That's not possible. You are coming with us. He opens fire on these two droids in the middle of a crowd. He could have easily missed and killed the guy they had been bothering, or worse, not immediately killed the battle droids and started a shootout in the middle of the street, and also potentially harming civilians in the process. Like, maybe this guy really doesn't have his proper identity papers. Maybe when these droids say, you are coming with us, that's actually just them being helpful and getting him registered correctly. There's no reason the show has given us to believe these droids are actually going to harm this man, and this rebel kind of just destroyed them in a very dangerous way. Who's the real bad guys here? Very late in the show, Mace Windu suggests surrender to battle droids for reprogramming, in this very odd scene. At this point of the Clone War, I have dismantled and destroyed over 100,000 of you Type 1 battle droids. I'm giving you an opportunity to peacefully lay down your weapons so that you may be reprogrammed to serve a better purpose than spreading the mindless violence and chaos which you have inflicted upon the galaxy. Blast them. This is Season 7, near the end of the war. Why would Mace Windu even try this? He should be well aware by now how droids act. They're not going to surrender because they probably can't. Or at least, shouldn't be able to. Also, where was Mace Windu's patience in this scene? Could we run? It would be better if we just surrender now! I'm surprised they even stopped firing to listen to him. Is this the show's way of saying droids have always had a choice? Or is it saying they have developed the capacity to choose later on in the Clone War? Droids are, from what I can gather, sentient in some aspects. More sentient than they really should be. The eternal problem with this is that although their suffering and destruction is played off as a joke, the more it continues, and the more you highlight the fact that, hey, uh, these things seem to be alive in some sense, things get pretty uncomfortable. And no one in the Star Wars universe really wants to acknowledge this. So without any clear lines for sentience drawn between droids, you kind of have to accept the fact that the only difference between R2-D2 and a battle droid is really just a little bit more memory, a higher robot IQ, and the fact one is on the good side, and one is on the bad side. I cannot think of a race, species, ghost, or even type of droid more abused, humiliated, and unappreciated than battle droids. When they are not being blown to bits by clones and Jedi, they are being mistreated by their own superiors. They'll get punished for a pretty reasonable request. How could your power cells be so depleted? You would not let us ride on one of those creatures with you, sir. You would allow us to close down for a few oh Or get killed for using the wrong word. They escaped, sir. Ah, Captain, show this droid what happens when we use that. Word. Just treated badly over and over again. Droids have been shown to want to surrender and have begged not to be shot. And despite these pretty reasonable requests, they get shot anyway. This is a really funny scene to me. Anakin and another Jedi are moving through a Separatist ship. Find droids, immediately kill these droids, and keep running. Then cut to the next scene. We are close. I guess the idea is they want to show that there's at least resistance to where they're going, but it comes across as entirely unnecessary. Like, we're over 30 episodes deep into the show at this point, and we know how Separatist droids and ships work. It seems like this scene could have easily been cut without losing anything. It's like the show really wanted us to see more droids destroyed pointlessly. In Season 1, Episode 20, Obi-Wan has just destroyed a bunch of droids, but he puts in just a little bit more work to close the door on this droid instead of just slicing its head off. Yep, this is about the worst job in the droid army. Huh? Huh? What? And it just went into overtime.
It's almost like there's this conscious acknowledgement from the character and the writers that killing this weaponless droid that's doing nothing else than cleaning a floor would come across as kind of cruel in a weird way. But like, Obi-Wan probably shouldn't do this. This is just leaving one more potential weapon open to be reclaimed by the Separatists, or if the Twi'lek population decides to reuse this cell, they'll have to deal with a battle droid without the help of a Jedi. It's weird they decided to spare this droid, and not many, many others before or after them, in similarly helpless positions. I don't know if the Clone Wars set the precedent, but it seems like after it aired, destroying droids in comedic but also kind of sad ways became the norm for battle droids in future Star Wars media. Now, I don't give a shit about Rebels, but I saw this clip on YouTube, and it pissed me off. Greetings, I am Unit B1268. My commander has sent me Yeah, to Clone Wars battle droid. Surprise, its battery hasn't run out. Don't see many of these anymore. Oh no. And when you do, there's usually a bunch of them. Alright, you know the drill. Now, I haven't played the new LEGO Star Wars video game, but this also pissed me off. You guys! You guys are the best! I never thought I'd make it to retirement, but here I- Even when they work for the good side, they are unappreciated. In Season 3, Episode 18, the beginning of the Citadel arc, three battle droids have been reprogrammed and are put under the command of R2-D2. This establishes that they can indeed be reprogrammed and used in Republic missions. I distinctly remember this episode and wonder why this didn't happen a lot more often. Why didn't the Republic armies just capture droids and reprogram them in mass? Not only are you taking weapons away from the Separatists, you are using them against them. There could be multiple reasons I can think of why this may not be practical. Capturing battle droids without damaging them might be more trouble than it's worth, or reprogramming them might be especially tedious. Or you need a more capable droid like R2-D2 to keep an eye on them. It only happens twice in the Clone Wars and once in the Bad Batch, so we don't have a big sample size to work with. Anyway, the biggest gripe I had with this arc, however, is how the droids are ultimately treated. The droids, with the help of R2-D2, are actually far more competent than any battle droids shown so far. They do their jobs exactly how they're supposed to, and even improvise in unexpected situations. Don't talk back to me, droid. I'm in charge. Sorry, Commander. Just wanted to fool them. Of course, the droids on the other side are completely incompetent and hand off their prisoners to the converted droids with little to no resistance. Anyway, these droids eventually save everyone's asses a few times over. And how does their story end? Well, they're told to hold off the enemy and are unceremoniously and immediately destroyed. As a joke. We understand, sir. We will delay the enemy as long as possible. It was an honor to serve under you, sir. No one else acknowledges their helpfulness except maybe R2-D2. I don't know what he's saying. In case you don't see the point I'm making, it's really strange to me to constantly establish that droids have personalities, feel fear, feel pain, chatter like nervous kids, even act downright polite, constantly say and do amusing things, and beg not to be killed, just to spend the entire show destroying them over and over again in unflattering ways. At that point, what other emotion am I supposed to feel except sad for them? Sad that they constantly get treated badly for trying to do their jobs, which they seem to have no further moral awareness about. It all comes across as deeply mean, and this aspect of the show constantly bothered me. After all of this, you have to step back and wonder what the writers' goals even were. I think the writers wanted to keep a childish, lighthearted tone for the first two seasons that was also in line with how the prequels treated droids, which is based off of George Lucas's weird insistence droids be useless. What you don't realize is that these guys really are not very efficient. They, uh, these things, you know, Jedi cut them down like they're butter, and they really are pretty useless. But they also sometimes wanted a fearsome, mindless robot army that kind of wanted you to forget that droids are pathetic. But as the seasons progressed and the tone became more serious, having droids interrupt scenes with silly antics became less appropriate, and making them more threatening would be inconsistent. So I assume they just included B1 battle droids less and less in the later seasons. All of the mean-spirited jokes are probably predicated on the flawed idea that, hey, they're just robots, so it doesn't matter despite the fact they gave these robots very human characteristics. 
Although I do not agree creatively that battle droids were treated like jokes constantly, I do understand why they did this, as battle droids are very memorable for their goofy personalities. I can't deny that. I only wish that maybe they were also treated with a bit more dignity. Both the clones and the droids as a whole get more and more characterization in the Clone Wars and Star Wars media in general. Clones get names and differing personalities. They dye their hair and modify their bodies. They can desert. They can question orders. They can even betray. Droids get more comedic. They get personalities. They can even on rare occasions desert. There's even stories outside of the TV show about certain droids that escape their endless cycle of destruction. Like Mr. Bones, an edgy, heavily modified droid and companion created by Temin Wexley. Or Roger, a droid made out of mismatched parts who served a human family. Although I think the prequels are very flawed, in fact, basically the entire Clone Wars story before the original trilogy is pretty flawed, there's something to be said about how these two armies, made to be mass-manufactured, unthinking drones, made solely for war, develop very human qualities at the individual level. Yoda makes a point about clones being slightly different in the first episode. There's not much to look at here, sir. We all share the same face. Deceive you, eyes care. In the Force. Very different, each one of you are. And droids are different too, but in less obvious ways. Some get promoted, some are slightly more intelligent. Jedi! Fire! Oh, wait! I knew that was a bad idea. Some can recognize older models, some droids even look out for each other. Droids and clones are shockingly similar. In the end, they are both programmed one by literal computers, and the other by their genetic makeup and the environment they were born into. One is programmed for the Separatists, and the other is programmed for the Republic. They are both soldiers being thrown at each other in a seemingly endless war that is ultimately orchestrated by Sith, amounting to victories and losses that in the end don't really matter. Good soldiers follow orders. Good soldiers follow orders. Finally, they can both feel, or at least they simulate feelings. In some cases, they both seem like they would be happier somewhere else. When it comes to war, everybody deserves better. Now, it may or may not surprise you that these are not original observations. In fact, it was not until I saw other people express their sympathy for battle droids online that I was inspired to make this video. People all over the world are waking up to droid oppression. There's memes, fan art of peaceful battle droids, fan art of droids with Judy Hopps for some reason. So. So much fan art of droids with Judy Hopps for some reason. There's probably droid sonas out there. The point is, although battle droids have gotten the short end of the stick in canon, they are thoroughly appreciated by those like me. Without them, the Clone Wars wouldn't be the same. My wish fulfillment spin-off Star Wars show would be a group of battle droids who gain complete sentience in the aftermath of the Clone Wars, evade the Empire, and gather their fallen brothers to populate an uninhabited planet in the Outer Rim, where they live the rest of their days how they want to, not according to the whims of warmongers, free from needless destruction and abuse. A place they can call home, because that's what they deserve. I would like to make a special shout out to the YouTube channel Geetsly for providing very interesting videos about droids and other info about Star Wars to fill in the gaps of my research. Although I cover a lot about battle droids in this video, there's still plenty more to learn about in his videos. Well, this video took a lot more time than I thought it would. Originally it was going to be like 10 to 15 minutes and then it just grew into this. The next video will probably take just as long if not longer. I am in a very weird spot in my life right now, and all I gotta say is, uh, thanks for sticking around.